So, five stack. First things first, though, let's get the serious topics out of the way. Did you ever have a game you, you fell in love with before Counter Strike? Was there a first love? I mean, I had three games. I had Call of Duty 4, which was the first game. Yeah, present. That pro mod, yeah, that's yes. the real, yeah, baby. Uh, I, I was really young back, back then, so you know the scene. It was more like you needed to be an adult to go to the lands and everything. Mm -hmm. Like nowadays, if you find a 15-year-old prodigy in CS, everybody's hyping them up. True. But back in the days, if you were 15, like nobody took you serious. And that was the case for me, I felt like. Then I played CS and League a lot of both games and I actually made the decision um, not like yeah I'm gonna switch to CS now to be a pro but I was in a team in league and in a team in CS like with the, my friends at the same time yes and uh, yeah. I just in league there was no how can you say this there was no platform there was no finished scene there was nothing there and I played um, a LAN tournament where I played both league in the tournament and CS, like amateur tournaments. But for CS, uh, on, on the LAN I played in like assembly, you know that there was this pro CS tournament and there was uh, like three Finnish teams there. Um, and I could see them live, I could see them play and I could see them play professionally for all this money. And then I was thinking like, why am I playing league or putting so much time in league where there is nothing in Finland? Like, I, I don't know who could make me better. Like, what can I do? Right. But then I can see all these Finnish players. And then I was like, yeah, might as well. And I kind of like uninstalled the game after. <laughs> yeah, no respect. I mean, that shows that like, you know, uh, not trying to sound like a kind of a woke podcast host here, but mm. uh, representation matters. You saw the Finns, you knew you could kind of... Yes. Oh, I still like if it went, went the other way, yeah. that there was like league tournaments or something, Maybe Different I would have, yeah, exactly. Not many Romanian Counter Strike players out there, is there? Mm, I mean, lately there are yeah. many. You're like, a bit of a trendsetter? Example, Sorry? You're a bit of a trendsetter. Probably, I don't know, because like, pro like after I joined Game of Legion, there are like a lot of Romanians deciding to go international or so. Like, until then, there were like a lot of people playing only in Romanians. Yeah. Now we have like, I don't know, a, a lot of examples. We have Longs, Blades. True. Uh, what more addicts as well Regal. from Regali yeah. Modo that went for TSM yes like it's coming like if you name them you, you know about them yeah before that like there is nothing and I would look at looking at you wonderful I mean I assume there was a lot of inspiration um, when you're looking at you know people from your homeland fragging out in Counter-Strike you're like okay I can do what they're doing I could do that do you, do you, were you watching some of the pros and thinking I can do this I could do this better Yes, of course, like, <clears throat> it's actually a really interesting story because, like, I think for everyone who is playing CS, he, like, has um, some player what you are looking for, like, and trying to, you know, be better than him. Mm. And for me, it was, like, simple for sure. I was looking for him and I was trying to, like, be closer to his level, but I was, like, like this. Yeah, of course, and, <laughs> yeah. Like, and just, I don't know. Like, you were inspired. Yeah, it, it actually gave me a lot of motivation was watching like how Navi was playing back in the days and it was really a big motivation for me because even I have suffered uh, some bad moments, like I lost some ELO or <laughs> I lost some like tournaments, I was looking at it like, and I was like, oh my God, I need to move, move, move. Yeah, well, we'll talk about moving in CS2 as well because I just watched that James Donk review. Did you see that one? Yes. Yeah. No. I watched it yesterday. Kid is just moving, just yeah. doesn't stop. But uh, we'll come back to that. That's an interesting James topic. James is making some banger content. Isn't he? I mean, yeah. damn, dude. James time. Shout out if you should check it out if you haven't checked out James' YouTube channel. Yeah, it's good, man. Really good. Um, but yeah, same kind of question to you in terms of your, uh, your inspiration stepping in. Did you kind of... You strike me as someone that was just... Act, not accidentally good, but like you're so naturally gifted at Counter-Strike. Uh, <clears throat> my story was... Uh, from begin, I was like watching how my uncle was playing, oh, okay. and just uh, and actually he played in Prosto, like uh, damn yes, and I just watched how he plays and yeah. uh, just played the game as well. Uh, I saw Navi as well, and I just play for some Elo. I wanted to take more Elo, and uh, that's why uh, I take some level. And after Navi Junior. 
I mean, not Navi Junior, Navi saw me. Yeah. And they wanted to do Navi Junior and they invite me and it's like story like this. So do you think it's like, it's, fa it's face it that makes it feel so accessible, like the path to pro? Because like when I wanted to, I did want to be a professional player. Okay, not in, not in Counter-Strike, but I, 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 you know, made a team with my friends. I scrimmed for too many hours after school into the early hours and went to lands and was chasing that dream for a little bit of my life. And I know it kind of helps me empathize with that journey. But do you think face it is like, it makes it so real for so many people because you're like, okay, I get this number, it goes this high, people notice me, maybe a team reaches out. Do you think that's like the, one of the reasons why we get this kind of talent pipeline still going? Yes, 100%. Yeah. Like it's 100% that because I remember, and you would remember as well, Back in the day, it was so hard. You could only have connections right. that you got invited to the right games. And if you were young, you didn't get invited. And the other thing is that you or somehow were in a team that succeeded enough yeah. for you to get seen. Or obviously there is that like really, really um, small amount of players that were just like so high above everyone else. Mm. But like right now, you can get noticed and be picked up by, by like a team that's trying to become become like one of the best right. or you can get even picked up to the absolute like best team like i was just to, like listening to this other post the talking counter yes yeah. podcast and they were speaking about uh these different players like bimas and whatever who like got a shot in face with nico and called at one point and it was a good example because for me it's like that never happened no. previously. Like kind of a uh, quote unquote no name. Yes, it, it, just it, it would never screen. happen. But now it, it can happen with Face It. And people actually put so much uh, fate on these players that play like really good on pucks and everything that they, or if, if they post some YouTube highlights right. or whatever, like they might get so much uh, recognition. Yeah, or, or just- uh, Even by not playing any officials. Chance. Yeah, and I mean, I find that so crazy because I, I need answers. It's a, it's a completely different game, right, Valerie? Like, you could be a pug star, superstar, mm -hmm. but it doesn't nat naturally mean you're going to be plugging into professional CS. Do you think that there's differences, right? Yes, it's uh, of course different because uh, when you play in officials, uh, most likely you're playing against good teams, and uh, in good teams uh, they have like. Uh, good macro, good uh, understanding of the game, and they will not allow you to do every time the same what you can do on packs or right. something like this. They will adapt for it, and you need to adapt as well. You need to uh, understand how they will adapt, so counter them, and a lot of mind games. And yeah, uh, that's why it's like different games. And I wanted. Um, uh, and also, also the skill, uh, also skill level is uh, more higher there than uh, in packs because before the officials everyone like uh, a lot of uh, a lot playing i mean warm up in before the game yeah not like on face it because on face it a lot of people not warm up and just playing for fun with friends or something sure. like this to take some fun yeah but it, but it does mean that there's just there's just this big leap um when you when it gets into pro cs i always i always wondered whether or not that's like um sometimes a shock when you kind of you first get your get your first shot in you know your Bemis examples or your you know, newer names examples when you step into pro cs and there's just another steep learning curve mm. uh you've been at this for a long time now alexi you, has, has it has, has it ever struck you as something you have to kind of help other teammates kind of adjust have you ever had a, a kind of new fresh faces or have you always been handed experienced players i don't have your liquipedia in front of me i'm thinking i'm racking through my brains I mean, I don't, I don't know, like, it's so individual, Yeah. like how people, uh, like I've been playing with these like really young players, like Sergey and when Monesi Chonchitu Chitu and whatever, yes, and it yes. felt like they never, they were never nervous, no. you know, but then I've, uh, like, I don't know, obviously the case for myself, I know when I've been nervous, I know when I've had teammates that were maybe a bit more nervous, but I feel like like once you get to the stage for the second time or you play it in front of a big crowd for the second time, like that's when you have already gotten some experience right. at least. Like the first time might be a bit overwhelming or it might be even easy to play because you kind of like, everything is so 
like your body is going to those extremes, you know, right. like every, oh. everything like is so weird. survival yes. mode. Yes. I mean, I remember whenever we played in, uh, with Game of Legion in the Rio Major. Oh, yeah. And then we, it was our first time with like a big crowd and we, we found it on the hard way against Furia. Right. Yeah. It was, oh yeah. Was yeah. that one of those games where you just kind of like, kind of open your eyes and you've, you've played 10 rounds and you're like, what happened? Where did it? I mean, kind of, but also like we were playing our game, but like we were like, we couldn't do anything because in our minds it was like, bro, they are helping them or something like this. We were like full shock. Whenever we were trying oh, to do yeah. something, they were screaming. Whenever we were doing something else, they were they're yeah, like you felt like very quiet. We were like, we were feeling like, I don't know, we were playing like a six against five or something like yeah, this. Yeah. It, it was so rough, yeah. but it was good. We got like a very good experience out of that. Yeah, and I mean, experience is, I assume you got, you're looking for a whole lot more experience. Wonderful. This is this roster going to be trying to play in front of the Spo deck, get those that that big crowd state and uh, stage games. Is that something you're excited for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I, I just played. We played on Abu Dhabi. Yeah. We were on stage and it was like for me it was okay because like I played in Rio as well on stage and versus Furia as well. But it was like a lot of games on stage uh, at Rio, I guess. Yes, as, as I remember, it was even from not Legend stage, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The way out from and the we played versus Furia. I remember this game. We were winning 10-5, and we lost comeback 47 Mirage, and we were screaming so much. And it was my first time, and it was like, <laughs> what the fuck? It was not full. The I mean, era arena was not full. Like we played against Furia. I remember, it yeah. was. But uh, you played in Legend stage, right? Like, I don't remember, but it was. But I think final. it was playoff. Yeah, yes. quarterfinal. Yes, oh, yeah. it was very was unfortunately. Crazy. Yes, it was really <laughs> crazy because a lot of people, a lot of crowd, and everyone cheer for Furia. They are just stepping there, like screaming a lot, and it's uncomfortable to play it at all because I it's like they are like here. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very close. Yeah. No, and I mean that that feeds us into the topic of of mental and how all of this is kind of tied to that same thing. Mm -hmm. Like it is, it is so int like t like the tilt you're talking about. You know, have a ten five lead, then one round. You know, and how everything feeds into. But you're just losing like a few rounds, and you're just you know, starting to be nervous. Even if you're winning, yeah. Just some rounds, like. Uh, I don't know, some sad rounds. Like and one yeah. thought in your head yes, is, just, yes. what if we lose? When it just kind of goes past, it just whispers yeah. and you, and past you look your and brain. Crowd and like, oh, no. Yeah. It's crazy how this, I mean, I think a lot of things in life, it's not, Counter-Strike is not unique, that it is so influenced by the mental. But I think in particular Counter-Strike, because there's so many micro decisions you're making every second, what did you communicate? What did you hear? What did you, you know, and it's all happening in these tiny, tiny microseconds that if you're mental somewhere else, if you're thinking about something else, it can, it has a huge effect on the game. <clears throat> How have you uh, encountered, you know, the, the mental side of Counter-Strike? I mean, you've, you, I felt like you kind of hit the ground super hard. You, you just like showed up and destroyed Paris with like uh, an incredibly cool, calm mental. Did that help set you up for success or did that set the bar to this kind of unobtainable standard where you were like, this is, this is going to be frustrating, especially when the community can be breathing down your neck? I mean, I never took it that way. I just, uh, I mean, I, I said it many times, we just played our game. We <laughs> knew at that point that uh, every team was shaky, like every single team was shaky. Every team can lose against anyone. Yeah. Everything can win against anyone. And then we just took it game by game, like we were so down zero two. We just didn't want to repeat the same thing that we did in, um, in it was Armar Bukharis for Antermus, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong. And then we went out zero three. We didn't want to repeat that. We play game by game. I think we beat, um, I'm not sure, I think Mouse first and then OG or something like this. For us back then, it, they were like, all like not not that much above us yeah. but they're better than us for sure and then for us it was very good and we qualified against first if i'm not wrong and then it was like for us it was every game it was a bonus right. and then we take it game by game it was it was so good we had a lot of fun as well and then we didn't have a any pressure and that do you think that benefit that was kind of a contributing factor into why you could play so comfortably and relaxed probably because uh, if you remember uh, every analyst every 
prediction was against us. That's we, right. Every game, but the first game, I'm not sure what that was to the first game, but every game was against us. Like we were the underdogs. Yeah, because we had that, there was a yes. graphic, they yes, tweeted exactly. graphic. So every game we were underdogs. Yeah. So the only game that we were not underdogs, we lost. And then after that, we just, every game we were underdogs and we just, so that was good. Well, we went there with no pressure and then yeah. we tried to do our best. And you had like you had the world against you. You kind of wanted yes. to prove them wrong, yes. but you're having fun and it's yes. relaxed. Yes. And I'm sure that really helps in the, in the, in the mentality thing. I, I have to say, Alexi, listening to the, um, the comms video they just dropped, mm. you could be my IGL any day, man. You're <laughs> so calm and collected on that stage. I mean, is that something that came quite naturally to you? Like, well, honestly, the contrast of the two teams, like G2, they're all just like bickering and shouting at each other. Well, where's the smoke, man? What the fuck are you doing, man? Alexi's like, guys, everything's fine. Okay, we're just gonna do this split, this split. Tell me if you hear this, let's go. No, but I didn't even, uh, I watched the clip. Actually, Hunter linked me the clip <laughs> yeah. on Steam. He was like, how did they upload it like this late or something like that? And I was like, might as well just watch it. And it was so weird because after the, watching it, I remember some of the comms or some of the situations very vividly. And obviously they left a lot uh, out of there as well. Sure. Like they, it was a long clip, but it was still like uh, packed with information. But I mean, kind of like deleted that game out of my mind already. <laughs> so it's kind of, because it was uh, really rough losing that game. Because you know, the opposition, like your opponents had a stand in, yeah. but they already made it that far. They played really good at the whole tournament. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just nice to listen to, I guess. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah, you, I, I, I remember Katowice. Like, I don't know why, but Katowice usually, like I've been on the stage I've been yeah. on finals two times, right? Yeah. So it's looking back at it again, you kind of like, I tried to er erase that memory, but then I got all the feelings, but it was, Katowice has been like special every time. Yeah. And yeah. it's been like nice playing it on the stage, like really nice. Yeah, I mean, Katowice has got to be, have a very special place because that's where the, uh, that's where the, the legacy was born. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, my career started, right? So yeah. that's. So it's just, does it always kind of feel uh, extra special when you're in that same hotel? You're looking at the same kind of, you know, the same bright yellow walls and the carpet. You're like, I know, I, this is where I make history, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in, in, in a sense, yes. But at the same time, been like many months even, mm. like in, in this hotel, the same, same place True. and everything. I, it's kind of unlucky that we're always here at this time of the year where it's kind of like dark outside, zero degree weather. Yeah. Like it would be nice to have like a summer here uh, one time, one but I don't Just think one. it's gonna happen, but yeah, yeah no. I, I'll, it's always like special. This time of the year, same hotel, same everything. Yeah, it's like a kind of a ritual now yes. uh, every year. And um, when you think about Katowice as well, like is, is it kind of seen by everyone in that same way as like a kind of a, uh, a prestigious kind of major Cato Cologne. Do you have that in a different, in a separate category, Valerie? Is that in terms of tournaments you want to win, tr trophies you want to lift? Uh, obviously, major is like more yeah. than this one, but this is the very like high class of tournaments, mm. and uh, I didn't won the Katowice mm. from the whole IM. I mean. This big tournament. You're collecting like Thanos stones. <laughs> you know, yes, and they want to win Katowice, but I very like uh, the Cologne, mm. and I very I, I. My desire is to take like major in Cologne. I want Cologne major, but I don't know where, when it will. Be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Cologne's not. So you wait. Yeah. Okay. He's got his maybe, plans. Maybe someday. What I will say. Major in Cologne. Maybe, yeah, you get you on the ball. <laughs> you're <laughs> That's when he gets like to the next level. Lesson. Extra 10%. Yes. Okay, hell yeah. And where's our Romanian events, bro? I mean, we had a, a major. Oh, wait, I'm going next week. And then week. we are going to see. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> of course it is. <laughs> but aside from that. Apart from that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually. I yeah. mean, we, we had a major in uh, Inclusion Apoca. Okay. 2014. Actually, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Really? But yeah. it's so, yeah. yes, but yeah. it's so long time ago. It was. I'm not sure why they're not making. Uh, majors in uh, in Romania because obviously it's not uh, I mean it's not that expensive to make a major there one well, percent like, beautiful and then, yes it's kind of central what yes. you can get there you can get like a, a lot of uh, good um, 
uh, how do you, how do I say like a good zones to make the major like for example Bucharest you have like we have big stadiums as well to make it and then yeah but you I, everything you need. I'm not sure I mean PGL they are they are Romanians PGL yeah. and then they are not making the major there maybe for some reason <laughs> I, I don't know why but yeah no the, 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 I mean obviously the major is in a in a category of its own Katowice are close by but when you ooh, but when you set your sights on on what I, I imagine is very still feels quite new, you know, in terms of this roster of five, mm -hmm. trying to set goals. I was having this conversation with Gamer Legion and I was talking about, mm. you know, is there, any, is there anything to be gamed for setting expectations or is that exclusively something for like an analyst desk? Like, do you gain anything by saying, by this point, we want to be doing this? Does that lead to, do you think that has, could, could have positive out, uh, like aspects or do you think that mostly is going to just set you up for disappointment and failure. I think it would be both ways because you can if for example if you set a goal that maybe is not realistic and then you fail it yeah. then you're gonna be like you said very disappointed then mm -hmm. it's a why the player or stuff like this but maybe you, you can get like a lot of encouragement to do it if you, if you set it like could, could go both ways yeah okay that's a good point because I've always felt like everyone's setting expectations, sometimes even non-verbally, like everyone just kind of quietly knows what they're expecting from a tournament, knows mm -hmm. what they're expecting from a teammate, a player, a, a team. And I, don't, I guess when that's not met, regardless of if you've outlined it, it can become, it becomes problematic. What's your stance on, on setting expectations as an as a IGL as well? I, I bet they're looking for you. I mean, I have first-hand ex experience of a lot of international teams I've been in, mm. and we had this talk every time. Right. And I think it's the... I think it's a bit easier when you're you are a if you have a team who consists like you have the same culture you're all this, uh, from the same place mm -hmm. it's a bit easier and some things are uh, better like easier said than done so when you have an international team and you go on to this topic there is so many different cultures there is so many different like people view the world just differently right yeah and the thing is that as uh, Miha just said if he might think like for him the goal is to you know win the major or the biggest thing ever win every trophy or whatever and for me let's say I wouldn't have it as a realistic uh, thing like obviously a dream of mine but if I would go on to win everything right but it's so easy to get disappointed right. yes. and it's so easy to not fulfill that dream and then like did you even believe in it in the first place you know right so it's like it's so hard this topic and it's so hard uh, i mean mm. four international teams have been in where i remember the same topic and it's like um you come into the realization realization that you might make a team try to make the team goal yeah. but you know that every individual probably has their own goals in mind probably has their own expe expectations True. And I've seen the biggest success in all these years is that when the team is just living CS, like we're currently like going to be abroad for like two months in a row yeah. now already for over a month. And it's just like we're on the same bubble and you kind of like go game by game, but you can see the progress. You can see you can visual, visualize everything way easier when you're kind of like apart from your real life like stuff you know of course so you're just only thinking about cs living cs and only thinking about this bubble you're in it's way easier but yeah, as miha said it's all really difficult to make it like really specific like that yeah it's always like a bit up in the air you might have some dreams here and there like that that are like you know the you don't even have to say them out loud yes you know? on, on the tier that you would do everything to achieve that. Yeah. But you need to be realistic. Yeah. So realistic goals then, wonderful. Uh, this has <laughs> set, set me up for success here. When we're talking about like setting goals, setting expectations, are you careful with that? Are you, do you try and be, you set, manage your expectations so you're not disappointed? Or do you, are you, are you quite a confident goal setter? I'm just doing always like this, just step by step, you know, yeah. just making my goals like, Little goal after like bigger, 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 right? just step by step. It's like more easier thing for like, you can use it even in life. It's just like, you will not fail nothing if you will do like this, like for myself, like yeah. I'm thinking like this, just step by step and everything will be okay. Yeah. 
Oh, I like that. That's what I'm saying in my five stacks. I've been trying to grind, grind Counter-Strike at the moment. And now I've, I, all I've been saying is, if we're not winning, we're learning. That's all I'm saying, because I'm just so tilted. I'm like staring at the ceiling, like you have to, you're learning, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, smashing tables as well. Yeah, lost 100 <laughs> ELO in okay. one day. Okay, great. Yeah, learning, it's okay. Are you a table smasher? <laughs> no. No? Uh, it was uh, only uh, one no, time. No, just a bit, just a bit. It was only one time. Yeah, but I mean, Party I understand. Day. It's like if, no. if someone on my five stack said those words, like after a couple losses, like uh, everybody would be full tilt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm definitely not saying that to randoms. Yeah. No, but let's talk about rage. Let's, let's talk about <laughs> rage. I mean, this game can make you the happiest and it can make you the angriest. I mean, it's, it's unique in that respect. Uh, how do we all handle rage? I'm going to go to the guy I, I have the least guess about, which is you, Bit. <laughs> you're not an angry guy. I yeah, feel like I'm you, not raising. No, I reckon you're just kind of you keep it straight. You, you, you probably put your push to talk and go. I am not happy with the result. <laughs> and then you, <laughs> that's it. yeah, is that it? Yeah. No, no, not like this. You, but so you've never felt that like bubbling fury that Counter Strike can make you feel. I mean, of course, uh, I when we're losing or something like this, I'm feeling very sad mm. and uh, understanding. The most uh, sad when you know you can win and uh, you know you're better, you know you uh, work a lot, you, you know you work hard yeah. and uh, you cannot win because of some mistakes and you are very sad yeah. because of it. But yeah. So it's not just me that goes to bed thinking about that one round and that one 1v1 that you could have won if you just no, played no. a little in bit. In the game, uh, you cannot be set because <laughs> in, in the, if you in the game set, you lost already. Yeah. Okay, so save that for bedtime. Yes. After the game, you can be set, yeah. but not in game. Actually, probably even more for an IGL. Mm. I mean, I saw... Um, you know, who was I casting yesterday? Oh, yeah, Nafani was just super tilted. I mean, but to be fair, Nafani and Electronic were both shouting at each other, at their teams uh, in the middle of the game. Uh, and I imagine that that's, do you, that, do you feel like a responsibility when you're the one that has to call the shots? You've you kind of got to put it in a bottle for, for your own yeah. emotion and I emotional mean, regulation? Yes, for sure. And I've been off, on both ends. I think I've learned a lot the past years. Mm. And I feel like it's actually right now, during officials, it's really hard for me to get tilted. Okay. Like, I'm tilted after the officials if I see that uh, people forgot the strat, and that's why we lost the round. Mm -hmm. But during the game, I can actually, like, um, ignore it, even when, like, even two years ago, one and a half year ago, uh, it was really hard for me to ignore if, you know, we practiced hard, Right. And then we go in the game and we forget something. And I knew, know in my mind, like, if we did it the way we trained, we would have won this round. Oh, I can imagine. So it's it really like sometimes I could get into this, it, this mode of like getting defensive or getting really frustrated because you know you had the round, you had the most important round yeah. in your hands, you would have won it and then you didn't. But right now I feel like it's really hard for me to get tilted during officials. After I might be tilted, after I might be sad, but right now it feels good to play at least. But I mean, that sounds like the right place for it. No, yeah. for sure. It right? does. Like yes. you've got everyone around and I, and I feel like there's a right way and a wrong way to give feedback as well. Like, it, it, do you feel like there's quite a bit of social intelligence required to have like to, to build a good 100%. team dynamic? Yes. Yeah. Like this is something I find really interesting because it's not nat you wouldn't naturally expect Counter-Strike players to need to, to have like that as such a high value skill. Yep. But social intelligence, could you, could you enlighten me a little bit? Because every person, you know, regardless of your job, every person takes feedback differently, has different expectations. Sometimes it's cultural, sometimes it's just personal. But like even with, you know, the talent team, like if I wanted to give feedback to one person, I'd give it differently to how I'd give it to another. And it's like, okay, they would, you know, some people like it really direct. Like, dude, you effed up. You know, you can do better next time. We talked about this, do, do better. But if I said the same thing to guy two, he's gonna be, you know, thinking I hate him for, the, for a week. Yes, I mean, depends how you say it. And that's why, for, for example, we are doing boot camps. That's why, for example, we are practicing every day because maybe you have to say something every day. Of course. You, you never know. Yeah. But then you're gonna know how that guy is gonna react. Depends how you say it. Yeah. Maybe at one time you say it like louder, maybe one time you say it more chill, maybe one time you just fucking scream oh, at so him, that's like you kind never of know. Testing. And then, yes, and m 
you will see how it's going to react. And then you know how to say feedback. And then everyone is going to be not upset at least if you say it. Yeah. If it's like a bad uh, feedback. As, or obviously, good feedbacks no one will, will get mad all the, of, out of it. Mm-hmm. Super interesting. Super interesting. It is to me, uh, all the teams I've been in, I know for a fact that it's when the coach can be vocal or is not afraid to talk to the individuals and you create this culture where the coach can be the guy who kind of like snaps someone out of their mm. head mm-hmm. you know someone might not be in the game or someone might be you know just for completely forgetting everything on the most important moments and that's when i feel like the best thing as an igl is that you have that sixth voice right. who can chime in because it's really hard i've been on teams where i've been the guy who's calling out sometimes and during a game or even during a day of practice you know if every individual is like really quiet and then someone needs to snap someone out of it. It can't be you. And if, if you always do it and you're also in the game, it might be, you know, not the nicest thing, not the best thing, because you kind of like, you want to get along with everyone. You want everyone to be happy, having fun. But at the same time, like, this is serious, right? Yeah, and it creates that separation. So yes. like, it's, it's you five against him as opposed to, you know, us four and like you're, you're trying to make the call, but also they all kind of feel like yes. you're being the sassy Yes, one. and I've, I have many individuals who are smart enough themselves that they're saying it out, out loud or something like, fuck, sorry guys, I fucked up. Like yeah. I should have done this or that. And that gives you and the whole team so much more encouragement because the guy just took the blame. Yeah. And you're like, like fuck it like let's go you know like, whatever but then there's been many individuals who aren't doing that or just like um, you know kind of like no respecting the others kind of like everybody's yeah. putting in hard work and remembering their stuff and then someone might not do it and nobody's calling them out and that's just going to breed resentment and like the, yeah exactly like a house on built on sand you yes. know it's just going to slowly yes, it's not out. like you know sometimes i've been the guy who's saying something but it's not like so there, there's been many other people as well. Like I've talked to individuals in the team that someone is disappointed in the other guy, yeah. but they're not saying it out loud. So then you <laughs> kind of like need to go in there in the middle. As so well. suddenly you're a therapist yes. as well. Yes, also that. <laughs> yeah, man. I've mul- the multiple masks you have to wear. Uh, yes, and also like room. individuals telling me something. And it's right. always good to hear, like uh, as we just said about how you give feedback. Yeah. Because someone gives me proper feedback or after the game says, so I want to do this differently or this, it's always nice to hear. Yeah. Like it's way better to hear something than like something building up for two months and then it like explodes. And then it explodes. And that's, that's, I mean, every, all of that fits under that kind of social intelligence umbrella. Yes, for sure. I'm getting waved at, have we, have we got time? We're done. Okay, no. all right. Uh, no, we've got to get out of here. Valerie's <laughs> had enough. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, boys. It's been a pleasure and uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, in the server. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Peace. That's an RV, baby. Five stack. <laughs>